Lesson three, customer care excellence. We're still in our orange section of the manual and in our lap, we are going from page eight onwards. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the common characteristics of people who provide excellent customer care, the features of personal presentation that make a positive impression on customers, the attitude required when dealing with customers, and how to carry out routine customer care tasks in a way that shows consideration for customers. You will be able to explain the concept of professionalism, the importance of effective teamwork for the delivery of excellent customer care, and describe the teamwork and skills required to deliver an excellent customer experience. You'll also be able to identify ways that an instructor can positively influence member retention, which we spoke a little bit about in our last lesson. You'll be able to identify ways that an instructor can build rapport with customers, explain the importance of the instructor making him or herself available and approachable to users. For example, walking around the gym floor and being available prior to a class. You'll be able to explain the importance of making a positive first impression on customers and describe ways of creating a positive first impression when communicating with the customers. So first up, I want you just individually to consider your personal experiences of good and bad customer care. This does not need to be within a health and fitness facility, but it just can be generally. For one good experience of customer care, I want you to write down what made the experience stand out for being positive, the speed of the response to your needs, and the efficiency of response to your needs. Okay, and then flip that round and do the same for one negative experience of customer care. Why did it stand out? What was the speed of response? And what was the efficiency of response? So if you just want to go ahead and pause the PowerPoint while you do that, we will come back as soon as you are ready. Okay, so again, next task. What five individual characteristics and attitudes are required to provide excellent customer care? Okay, so for example, what about being approachable or being friendly or being welcoming? What five individual characteristics are required to provide excellent customer care? So pause again while you write those down and we'll come back into this. You do need this for your lap as well, so it's very worthwhile you writing all of these answers down. Okay, next up, we're going to list five benefits of providing excellent customer care for both the organization and the employee. So this is in relation to the role of a gym instructor. So five benefits of providing excellent customer care. So pause again, write those down, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so benefits of providing excellent customer care can include, but are not limited to, customer loyalty and repeat business, increased sales and profit, fewer complaints, Less money is spent on customer acquisition. It reduces staff absenteeism and turnover. You have improved employee relationships and increased opportunity to upsell. Okay, so hopefully you had some of those down and there are other ones as well. So, talked a little bit about customer care. Teamwork in customer care. What examples within the role of a gym instructor relate to effective teamwork within customer care? 
So just take a few minutes here to write me down three examples, okay? Maybe you've seen it in a gym with different instructors or maybe you feel like you've undertaken it within a gym environment. Write me down three examples just now. Okay, so again, these can include but are not limited to referring a client who wishes to gain more knowledge or support in an area that a fellow fitness instructor or personal trainer specializes in. So for example, that might be someone who comes to you and wants to focus on Olympic weightlifting. As a gym instructor, you are not qualified to help them do that unless you have a specific qualification in that thing they're looking for. So you would refer them to someone who has experience and qualifications in that area. You may also support an instructor by team teaching a group exercise class because of larger numbers than that one instructor can handle. This is quite common in gyms and can be really fun as well. It may look like asking reception staff to support a client with additional information on specialist products or services, or even double spotting a client who is using a heavy bar. Obviously that is depending on the situation, um, but obviously, and again, making sure that the gym that you're in, you know the rules on spotting, you know what is allowed and what isn't. Okay, so first impressions and building a rapport with clients. The first impressions is the 93% rule, okay? So this suggests that what you actually say makes up 7% of someone's first impression of you, only 7%. And the other 93% comes from your appearance and your body language, as well as your voice tone, pitch and pace of talking. Okay, so it's only 7% of the words you actually use. So you have a minimal amount of time to make a good first impression. So you need to consider the following. Eye contact, smiling with sincerity, being attentive, focused on who you're speaking to and listening to them, offering a pleasant and genuine or sincere greeting, introducing yourself by name. If you know the customer's name, always, always try and use that, it's really important. And acknowledging the customer, even if they have to wait and finishing the transaction positively. Don't be rude or just walk away. You need to finish, leave up, and then have a positive lasting final impression on them as well. Okay, so we have lots of different responsibilities on the gym floor and we have minimum responsibilities, but it's always good to go that extra mile if you can. It makes you look good, it makes your employer look good and it makes your client or customer happy. So. Minimum expectations here would be supervision of the gym floor in relation to health and safety. An example of going the extra mile would be filling up a customer's drinks bottle while he or she is on the CV machine. Again, make sure that you know your gym's policy on touching customer's belongings as it may have changed recently. Minimum expectations, welcoming your customer politely. Going the extra mile would be offering to support with spotting or just checking that they are getting on okay with their program and they know what they're doing. Minimum expectation, providing guidance and support where appropriate. Going the extra mile, asking your customer how their session was and if they need a program review. Minimum expectation, responding positively to customers needs going the extra mile, carrying out research on behalf of a customer. So perhaps they've asked you about good brands of kit or perhaps different brands uh, available for nutritional things and um, loads of different things that you can research on behalf of them. Final minimum expectation, maintaining the tidiness and cleanliness of the gym environment. 
going the extra mile would be remembering a customer's name and wishing them a happy birthday on their birthday, making them feel special and like you are particularly focused on them. Okay, so we can now describe common characteristics of people who provide excellent customer care, features of personal presentation that give a positive impression, the attitudes required to deal with customers, how to carry out routine customer care tasks. We have the concept of professionalism. So this is how you present yourself, your attitude, your smile, how you talk to people. It is not folding your arms, being grumpy, being rude, turning away from your customer. We know the importance of effective teamwork for delivery of excellent customer care and team working skills required to deliver an excellent customer experience. Through this good customer service and uh, providing your customers with value, we've seen that the instructor can positively influence the member retention we talked about earlier. Building a rapport with customers, so going that extra mile, getting to know them, finding out a little bit more about them and their lives. We've talked a bit about making the instructor uh, approachable for users. So again, that's that going the extra mile. Can you walk around the gym floor? Can you be available before and after class? We talked a little bit about the importance of making a positive first impression and ways that we can do this. So again, check out that orange section of your manual for loads more information around customer care and service. And also turn to page eight of your lap so that you can complete the questions there.